to West Country Wanderings and welcome to another one in my canal series today. We're on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal just a little bit north of the Worcestershire town of Kidderminster. I'm here at the beautiful village of Wolverley and just behind me there is Wolverley Lock. What I'm going to do is walk along the towpath, capture some sights and sounds of the canal as we make our way to the village of Cookley. So I hope you can join me for that. Now the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal opened in the mid 1770s and it connects up to the River Severn at Starport on Severn. Prior to the canal arriving and meeting the River Severn at Starport on Severn, well there really wasn't that much to Starport, it was only a tiny little village. I put the name of it, what it was originally called, below. And the opening up of this canal increased the freight carried onto it. The increase of trade on the River Severn caused by the opening up of the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal bringing down goods from the West Midlands and the coal flowing in both directions or along it, that promoted a later canal, the Gloucester Sharp Ness, which opened in the earlier part of the 19th century, which I talked about at the start of my Seven Way, the recent one when I walked from Sharp Ness docks down to Albury on Severn. Here though, the Staffs and Wuss, as it's affectionately known, is on a high embankment. It's actually just behind the camera there on an embankment, above the River Stour, which is literally just here. We've now arrived at the very picturesque Wolvery Forge Bridge, number 21, so called because just over the left there you'll see a white house through the trees that probably be a bit overexposed. I'll see if I can focus in on it. I think that's it there. That is the former Wolvery Forge, which was a blacksmiths, or several blacksmiths actually, worked out of it. In front of me looks like we have a private wharf from the corner of the back there before I saw it open up. I thought it was a, a winding hole, but uh, no, it looks like it's a private wharf to a house, which is just to the right. It's a very large house, in fact. I don't know if that was originally a wharfside building which has been converted into a dwelling. Now here you can see the engineering it would have taken to have built this canal through in the 1770s, with quite a deep and substantial cutting through the red sandstone rock. The rock actually extends onto both sides of the canal here. I wonder how old those marks are there in the red sandstone. You've got like numerical marks, like somebody was counting something down, perhaps used by some of the wharf men that were on the opposite side of the canal here, or even the barge men going up and down, and the linksmen on the canal here. Some more recent marks down there as well. And here, the River Stour is very, very close to the towpath of the Staffs and Wuss. And just looking back at that cutting again, from the opposite direction, in all its grandeur. There's a very busy road in Wolverley, goes through it, but there's also a very nice pub there by the lock. And the road goes from Wolverhampton to to Moulton-Hampton in West Midlands to Bridge North in Shropshire. Once you get away from that road, you get into some wonderful peace and quiet. And what a wonderful sight that is. That's beautiful.
Oh, wouldn't that be a very desirable place to live? It's absolutely gorgeous. So the act that started this fabulous canal, the Staventure and Worcestershire Canal, was passed in 1766 and the canal engineer, well you'll know the name, it was one James Brindley who also engineered many many other canals around the time of the canal mania. The canal itself is 74 kilometres long, I'll put what that is in old money, is that around about 42 miles? And it connects of course to the River Severn, right up to the Trent and Mersey Canal in Staffordshire, near a place called Great Haywood. And I think just before it enters there, I've not been there, but before it enters there, it goes across an aqueduct over the River Trent itself. So. Uh, Unfortunately, that's outside my area, so a bit too far away from me. So we're at our uppermost normal limit here today. But it's a fantastic canal. Is it seven foot, two inch wide? Thereabouts, that's the width of the canal. So it's not a, a wide beam canal by any stretch, but uh, it's got great engineering on it, as you can see just behind me. So that's our embankment there, or cutting, should I say, deep cutting. In fact, there are lots of curves on the canal at this point in this area of northern part of Worcestershire as it follows the lie of the land, particularly the River Stara. So we're obviously in the Stara Valley, of course. And if I just pan the camera down, you'll see there was something else here. And it was some brickwork down there. And I think that was just to build up the towpath. You can actually see it going all the way along. Just hidden there by the undergrowth. A couple of other statistics for you. The entire canal length has got 43 locks on it, including the one we've seen just down there, Wolverley, a famous one in the town of Kidderminster, and the one we're going on to next, which I think is called Debden or Debley. We're going to have a look at that in a moment. But uh, yeah, so this is a stretch here. And because of these curves where it angles around through the cuttings following the line of the River Stour, it means the maximum boat length is some 70 feet i put what that is in proper money below. So now made it around to Debdale Lock. There's a couple of boats trying to get through the lock at the moment. It's getting a bit chaotic down there. So I've come up here. I'm now at Cookley Playing Field. And I'd like to thank a subscriber today for well, highlighting this place because I wasn't familiar with this area at all. I know Kidderminster from the Severn Valley Railway and Starport on Severn, but not this section of the Staffs and Worst Canal. What an absolute delight it is with those beautiful cuttings, curves, following the delightful River Stara and a couple of locks in this area as well, as well as two villages in their own right, which I don't really have time or justice to cover today. So thanks very much for that, Dawn. There is a campsite, which I think is where Dawn and family stayed, which is actually in Wolverley itself, right next to the River Stara and that pub. So it's a beautiful area, very, very convenient place. Too. Well, it's not that far from M5 and uh, lots of places in the northern part of the area, like in West Country in the West Midlands. So really great place to come and visit. We just want to walk by the canal or indeed hire a boat and go along the canal yourself.
Now, unlike a lot of the other canals we've come across here in West Country Wanderings, there wasn't a huge restoration scheme for it because it never actually closed as such. Obviously, trade on it wound down. Of course, it was nationalised in 1949, becoming part of, well, coming under the British Transport Commission and, of course, British Waterways. And in 1959, there were plans to close it completely. There was a little bit of trade on the canal still, moving coal into Starport's power station. But that started to dry up and a local group, the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal Trust, was formed to ensure that that didn't happen. At the end of the 1960s, it was reclassified as a cruiseway, which meant it needed to stay open for the leisure industry. Indeed, that's what happens and that's what continues to happen today. Just before I go today, I wanted to tell you about the legend of Wolverley and the Swan. It concerns a Lady Atwood. In the early 1200s, her husband had gone missing. He'd actually gone to fight in one of the crusade battles and she was planning to remarry. Many years later, she was walking through the fields with her elderly dog and she came across an old man lying in the field with a very bedraggled beard. The dog, however, recognised the man and it turned out that this man was Sir John, a knight. In fact, her husband, her long lost husband from many years previously. So she was in a dilemma. How had he ended up bedraggled in a field? Well, according to legend, after the Crusades, he'd been captured by the opposing army and thrown into a cell. One night, a magical swan appeared on the roof opened the cell door, beckoned him onto the swan and flew him back to Wolverley to be back with his wife. It's an interesting tale. Allegedly, the ring that he had matched up with hers, so they two matched up. What doesn't match up in the story, though, is that there was no crusades around the time of the story supposed to happen. But maybe he'd been in prison for another reason. Maybe he'd gone to a debtor's prison or whatever, so we don't really know, but uh, it's a nice tale anyway, the Swan of Wolverley. Well, thank you very much for watching West Country Wanderings today in my canal series, Shortish Bite. It was a little bit of a longer short bite, wasn't it? But uh, you get the picture, it wasn't a full blown one. Hope you enjoyed this little adventure here on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal in the northern part of the beautiful county of Worcestershire, alongside the River Stara. There will be another canal series coming up on the channel in the not too distant future. I'm hoping to do a return to one looking for a lost canal. Remember last time we did the Lempster Canal? We're going to be looking at another one, this time in the county of Somerset. So I hope you can join me for that. Until then, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves. Hope to see you on the channel soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Goodbye. <music>